we come to the place in our service where God's people remember the death of the Lord Jesus for our sins. <clears throat> to prepare for this, we're going to consider a portion of scripture from the last part of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5. In this chapter, the religious leaders of the Jews had just asked Jesus why his disciples do not fast like the disciples of John the Baptist and the disciples of the Pharisees do. In other words, why are you not conforming to the status quo of the current religious system? Jesus replied with a question. You cannot make the attendant of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them, can you? Jesus came to earth to call out a people to be his bride, which would become the church. His disciples were the attendants of the bridegroom, whom he was training to lay the foundation of the church. He is presently with them now, but he will be taken away in the future. Jesus then told them a parable to illustrate why his ministry does not conform to the present religious system in Israel. Look at verses 36 through 38 of Luke chapter 5. No one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, both will tear the new and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. <clears throat> Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and it will be spilled out and the skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. The point of what Jesus is teaching here is that he is inaugurating something new, and the new is not compatible with the old. Just as the piece of cloth from a new garment is not compatible with the old garment, unshrunk cloth will make a tear in the old garment when it shrinks. So Jesus is introducing the new covenant, and it must be not be amalgamated with the old covenant. It must replace it. On the night when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. Jesus' blood would be the basis upon which Jesus and God would fulfill his promise to Israel as was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet when he said, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Not like... Uh, with the house of Israel. The God's people continually failed to live according to the old covenant. The old wine of Judaism would be replaced by the new wine of the gospel. The new covenant would require new people who would live in keeping with God's standards. To put the new wine in the, of the gospel into the old wineskins of Judaism would both ruin the old wineskins and it would waste the new wine. New wine in new wineskins guarantees that God's people will live according to the, the word which will be written on their hearts. While the new covenant promise was originally given to the nation of Israel, the nation as a whole has not yet received this promise. But those who receive Jesus, their Messiah, as well as the Gentiles who believe, enjoy many of the new covenant blessings which Israel as a nation will enjoy in the future. Christians need to be reminded of what we have in Christ. God has given you a new heart. He caused you to be born again, and he created a new nature within you. God has given us the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus described as rivers of living water flowing from the inner man, which he would give to those who believed on him. And this Holy Spirit is a seal of our salvation till the day of our final redemption. Jesus' blood 
has redeemed us from sin and it's brought us into the family relationship with the eternal God. Through Christ, we have the forgiveness of sins. The, the omniscient God will not remember our sins against us in judgment. Christ has paid the full penalty that our sins deserve. All the new covenant blessings that we enjoy were brought to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why we remember his death in the Lord's Supper. The bread represents the body which he took upon himself in order to die for sins. The cup represents the blood which purchased us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> the suffering which Christ endured as he paid the penalty of our sin, especially the pain of being separated from his father as he bore the penalty of our sins in his own body. This should impress upon us how reprehensible our sins are in his sight. And it would be an incentive for us to repent of any lingering sin that remains in our body that costs such a price. Then we would partake as we repent of those sins, we would partake of this, this Lord's Supper with gratitude and uh, with, for his grace. Jesus ends this parable on a sad note. He says, and no one after drinking old wine wishes for the new. The old is good enough, is what they say. Je Jewish leaders were satisfied with their religious practices. They had no use for Jesus or his message. Many of the Jews felt that they had an end with God because they were descendants of Abraham. And they had uh, God's law. Many felt that their good deeds would find approval with God. In addition, they fastidiously kept to their human traditions and uh, thought that this gained merit with God. If you're here this morning and you feel that you're good enough to be accepted by God, on your own base, on your own, on your own merits, apart from God, this communion is not service is not for you. We ask that you refrain from partaking of the elements. This ordinance is for those who have these things in common. We know that no one is righteous by nature, that we are by nature dead in sin. We believe that God is holy and that he cannot approve of sinful creatures. Rather, he must judge them. We know that God has so loved the world that he sent his son to make atonement for sin upon the cross. We know that the one who believes in Jesus is forgiven of his sins and receives eternal life as a gift. God made his son who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Think of that. Through Christ, we who are undeserving sinners receive the gift of righteousness because Jesus, who was righteous, bore the penalty of our sins. God, who is holy, can look upon us as righteous through our faith in Jesus Christ. We ask you to come to Christ and enter into the favor with God that's a gift through faith. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The men will distribute the elements of our communion. I ask that you just remain in quiet meditation as the elements are distributed and wait until I return to the podium and we will together open the packets and, and uh, partake of the Lord's Supper together.